My name is Mike McGrath, and I'm currently a managing architect for the Platform Group, working on containers and OpenShift and uh, all the new things that are coming in RHEL. Atomic is a project that started upstream in the community uh, as a place for Red Hat to land all of its new container technology work. And so that work ends up in all kinds of different products, including stuff like OpenShift, and it ends up in Atomic Host and RHEL. Uh, but the reason that someone want to come to Atomic uh, to use it is primarily for container purposes, either for development with containers or possibly uh, operations work with containers. Atomic Host is, the f is our first productization of uh, container technology that uh, comes from the Atomic project at projectatomic.io. And the interesting thing about uh, Atomic Host is that it takes a lot of our traditional RHEL technologies, especially in the kernel, and it, container, it, it allows you to build containerized applications and uh, deploy them onto Atomic Host, which is a container-optimized platform. And I think that that is interesting for both developers and operations alike. Atomic Host, as it's released in RHEL, is fully supported today and ready for production workloads. But there are a lot of people that may want to look upstream to Fedora, where we also have a community edition of Atomic Host. And even downstream in CentOS, we have a unsupported version of Atomic Host. Fedora's edition of Atomic Host is really special. It's a place where we're doing all of our work upstream. We release every two weeks, and it's the fastest moving operating system Red Hat has to offer. Uh, and we make major changes there uh, in terms of Docker, Kubernetes, and sometimes even in the kernel. And one of the things that makes Atomic Host so great is that you have the ability to roll back if you've accidentally found a bug or you've moved too fast for what you want to do. You can always roll back to the previous version and you're good to go. The introduction of containers uh, to development workflows added a really great tool for developers to build a single unit that can then be given to operations and sent around and built. So it's a, it's a self-contained unit. Uh, what we're doing with Atomic and the container optimized operating systems is taking a lot of that same workflow and applying it at the operating system level. Uh, this will allow you to basically version control not just the container that you're using, but also the actual operating system it's deployed on. And that allows you to make sure that you have version locking all throughout your deployment and to make sure there's no surprises from one end to the other. I think one of the most important inventions probably in the last 10 years in terms of developer tools has been the container imaging format. Uh, that format, uh, which is what Docker invented, allows developers to build an artifact or, or build an application and then send that individual container through the full production work throw, through staging, through to production, and they know that whether or not it's in stage or production, it's the identical artifact and it's the one that they built. Uh, and this really helps get rid of the whole, well, it worked on my laptop scenario uh, and, and builds a, a workflow that works for both developers and operators. Another really interesting thing for operators who are using containers today is this whole paradigm that they'll remember from the early 2000s uh, during the RPM find days where if you needed a dependency or some new thing, you'd go and Google it and download it and who knows who built it or if it works or if it was made by some hacker in Russia. Uh, but they'd go and find it and install it. And we see a lot of that today uh, with the upstream Docker repository, which is a great place for developers to share content, but that doesn't necessarily make it the right place for you to be downloading those things. And that's where Red Hat comes in, right? I mean, that's our, our, our biggest uh, addition to all this is the ability to certify not just what is on the operating system, which we've been doing for two decades now, but also what's in the container, uh, from the container all the way through to the hardware. Project Atomic started as a place for us to build our new container world. Containers have had a really big impact on Red Hat. And the introduction of Atomic Host was really just the starting point of all of this container ecosystem that we've been building. I think what people will find over the next coming years are additional tools built around helping operators and developers build better applications, deploy them better, deploy them faster, and I think most importantly, have a better idea of what's going on inside of their environment, uh, whether or not that's doing upgrades uh, to thousands of machines at once and making sure it all worked, uh, to the ability to just understand what is running in your environment at any point in time. And we're seeing this in the upstream project with lots of new components being created like Commissaire, which is a way to uh, coordinate very basic cluster functions uh, inside of an atomic host. And you're also seeing things like that upstream in Kubernetes, where uh, clustering options are available for building applications uh, via these application templates. And it's a, it's a really great time to be uh, building and working in containers, 
And I'd encourage anybody who is interested to go to projectatomic.io for more information. This is a really exciting time for containers. And there's a lot of very interesting work going on upstream at projectatomic.io. And for any developers or operators who are interested in getting involved, that's your starting place to go. And I look forward to seeing you there.